Sebastian, how are you? I'm doing great. Okay. I'm doing great. We're end of September and it's sunny outside. So we're doing well. We're doing well. Okay. Uh, before we talk about your, your record, I'd like to go back to the beginning quickly. Sure. Do you remember the first album you bought? Yeah, the first album I bought myself was a, was actually it was a triple best of of okay. Queen. Okay. Um, with that silver packaging, mm -hmm. and uh, I still have it, I still love it, so I think it was a good idea to buy it. Do you remember uh, why at that time you wanted that particular album? I think I wanted that record because I'd listened to the show Must Go On, mm -hmm. and um, I was seven years old. And that song just drove me crazy. I remember being alone in my room and jumping around, pulling my hair or whatever. It was weird, but it did on me. And when I went to the shop, I saw Queen, and I didn't even look what it was. I just mm -hmm. bought it, and okay. it happened to be a triple best of. Okay. So I and had the whole collection then. And maybe one song or a couple songs in particular that that's... Well, on that record, uh, I had a, a crush, of course, for Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite Queen songs ever is uh, Innuendo. Okay. I think that song's amazing. Mm -hmm. So they were all on the record. So, But I didn't skip songs, okay. usually. Okay. I, I would just listen through the whole record. Yeah. And you uh, say that you still like it. Uh, when was the last time you listened to it? When was the last time I listened to it? I think, I think last time was in a venue that I was playing at okay. and like during the afternoon after the sound check the guy from the venue just played okay. Queen like the whole afternoon and I was there singing along so it was it was pretty recently I think and so, so now uh, a lot of year, years later since since you first heard them looking back well, and maybe this is a silly question but what makes Queen so good I think the quality of the writing I think the uniqueness of Freddie Mercury's voice you know, I'm not sure we've had something similar in the last years. Um, it, the stage presence they had, the numbers of hits they had, um, those songs that literally, you know, bring the people together. It's, uh, they're all anthems and, you know, it's, it's those bands that, you know, never get old. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. And also for me, you know, being from Switzerland, you know, there's a relationship with Montreux where sure. Freddie used to live and recorded songs at the Mountain Studio with David Richards. Um, I've had the occasion to go there, so it's, it's yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure it, there's plenty of reasons why Queen is, is one of the greatest bands, yeah. And you say you were around seven when, when you got this album? Yeah. When, um, and, and like you say, you grew up practically in Montreal, where, where yeah. obviously the jazz Just festival next door, is. Five, five minutes away. So was it very early on that you knew that you wanted to do music? Very early, actually, yeah. yeah. And I think growing up next to Montreal Jazz Festival was probably a big part of it, because every summer during two weeks, I would not go on holiday. I would go at the festival with my parents, and we would just you know, stand in front of the free stage and, you know, listen to the bands that were playing along. And, you know, also Montreal Jazz Festival on, when I was 10 years old, they had a free recording booth and you could just show up okay. and like record some stuff. So I have a, I have a record from when okay. I'm 10 years old and I'm singing a cappella songs that I'd written at this time. Um, so there's always been a pretty close relationship okay. with m me and, and Montreal Jazz Festival. The best thing was I've been discovered through Montreal Jazz Festival because okay. the founder member, Claude Knops, uh, found me when I was playing in the bar okay. and uh, he just made me play Montreal Jazz Festival and from that moment that was just a, you know, it was a big help for me. Um, so of course it's all linked and of course growing up next to this big music mm -hmm. um, legend uh, sure. probably pushed me to, to play a little bit of music, yeah. And you mentioned you had an album that you recorded there of a couple of songs. Have you listened to it recently? I haven't because, sadly enough, I'm okay. not sure where he is. Ah, okay, fair you enough. Know? But uh, it's, it's home somewhere, so okay. uh, I'm, not, I'm not afraid we'll find it. But um, it's, it's really funny. I mean, every t it's, a, it's a very secret thing. Like, you know, maybe ten people have heard it. Okay. Um, and I had to kill five of them <laughs> after, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but what I find interesting, because I'm sure you remember kind of what it sounded like, could you hear already what you're trying to do, so to say? 
Yeah, I think I was. The only difference was I was I was singing in French, my mm -hmm. mother tongue, and uh, mm -hmm. I didn't speak English by by the time. But yeah, um, I was just writing songs about how I felt or what my desires were or mm -hmm. about what you know I was disappointed about or things that I was fascinated. You know, I was talking about war and how bad it is. Okay. I was talking about me writing uh, with my dad on the Harley Davidson. I was talking about the people at school that were mean. You know, I've always been writing with mm -hmm. like the time that I was living. You know. And and what this, did this writing do for you? Because you started, uh, like say, at a very early age. What yeah. what what did putting thoughts onto paper do for you? And then the singing now singing them out later. I think it always it always was kind of a therapy, okay. even more than a therapy. It was just fixing problems. Like okay. I had thoughts and I had to express them somehow. Mm -hmm. And sometimes. There were things that I didn't want to tell my parents or I didn't want to share okay. with my friends. So I was sharing it with the, mm. with the music. And um, that's a fun fact about my first record, because my mm. first record is really authentic. I'm just saying everything that's going through my head as a teenager. You don't always have the most positive thoughts, of course. Sure. And uh, when it was released, I felt like, oh, fuck, <laughs> now everybody's going to know about it. And uh, you know, when you're a teenager, you're also always thinking you're very unique and you're the only one sure. to think a certain way. And that was for me, the release of the first album was an open, I mean, it opened my eyes, you know, uh, because I had all those feedbacks from everybody that was texting me on Facebook and, and sending me letters telling me, hey, we just feel the same. Okay. So that's also why I'm saying it's a therapy, mm -hmm. um, also to release it and, and to get the feedbacks. But I've always been writing because I don't know. It just always felt very natural. It, it, it always felt like part of my day, you know. Mm. I, I, I was writing stuff, and I, I never feared to perform. So I think that helped me, okay. um, you know, keep on writing because mm -hmm. I always wanted to present better songs. And uh, like, yeah, every Friday afternoon at school, I would have my little moment where I would present my new song to mm -hmm. the class. Okay. Always been performing quite a lot, yeah. So you have this uh, first record and, and those songs, like you say, were re very honest and, and because you didn't have an audience yet, but then... At all, I mean, my friends and family, but you know, even there, I was, sometimes I was not even singing the right lyrics right, to right, make right. sure they wouldn't understand, <laughs> you know? So... But, but th know. then, um, after, after that first album, was it more difficult to write songs because you n know people are gonna hear it? Of course it was. <laughs> it's normal that it was, and this is why it happens so many times that the mm. first record is just the best one, mm. because you're not, and I mean, you're not caring about anything mm. because you're basically convinced that no one's gonna sure. ever be listening, you know, to your record. So on the second album, I remember sometimes where I was writing, and like all of a sudden I would think, no, I'm not gonna <laughs> say that. You know, also thinking maybe, is this politically correct? Can mm. I say that? How do I want to say that? And also because you live a different life and you have to get used to it. You know, when, when I wrote my first record, I was a teenager in my room course, yeah. playing ice hockey, going to school. I, I was doing very normal things. And then your life is traveling from a city to another, uh, do a show, do an after party, mm. get drunk, <laughs> be, be hangover the day after and, and get back on another plane and find it amazing. So what do you want to write about? Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, that's why the biggest song of my second album is actually a song that talks about a party in New York. Okay. I mean, it's cool too. Sure. Uh, you just have to, you know, get used to that living mm -hmm. until that living becomes a routine, which sure. is kind of what I'm having right now, which is why I think the third record, the one that's coming out right now, is, is just me going back to just being authentic also because I've had a kind of a relationship um, two summers ago that inspired me a lot and that's also the first time I'm talking about love in the terms of a positive thing okay. which I never did before um, so I think yeah the third record is, is interesting and I didn't I just said everything I had to say you mm -hmm. know I didn't calculate anything I was just all right fuck it I'll say what I want to say I, and I did also something, I explained all of my text on Facebook, okay. just so I wanted everybody to like you know what, what mood I was in, what, mm. what, you know, what's the story behind and all those things to give, the, to give credit to the, to the writings.
is it easy to have uh, people know so much about you? Like you're a public figure now, and like you say, you explain your thought process. Is is that well? Part well, you mentioned that you like um, the connection you make with people that they yeah. can relate. So, but but was that easy to do to to that people kind of know your personal life? Well, you know, you you, you control it in mm -hmm. a way because I'm not George Clooney sure. that has paparazzi following him all the time, and and you know that are literally going to be waiting for him to do something wrong mm -hmm. or what. I do a lot of shit and nobody cares about it. And um, and that's a thing. I give what I want from my private life. Okay. So people, if if they like it, you know, it's, it's fun. It's all right. I deal with the fact that, yeah, some people sometimes just talk to me because they know my face. <laughs> and it's fun, you know. Okay. It's all right. Just like you would do with... Uh, with a TV host, you feel sure. like you're a friend because you've seen him on TV so many mm -hmm. times, but you actually never met him. Sure. And you just, you'll just be like, hey, what's <laughs> up, dude, you doing all right? So I think that gives a kind of very spontaneous um, feeling okay. uh, to the people with me. So it's all right, I think. Okay.